Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Happy Coder. And today in this video, like we have discussed before, we're still going to talk about the best software for note taking for developers. And in today's video, we're going to discuss two additional pieces of software, which include Notion and Joplin. And first of all, let's start with Notion. The Notion note taking software has been gaining a lot of traction in the community. I've seen a lot of people talking about it and it's really gained a lot of popularity because of all the functionalities and the slick user interface. However, my contention is if you're a developer who's looking to take notes with the markdown syntax, then Notion is probably not a good fit for you because it tries to encompass too many additional functionalities aside from just being a good markdown editor with some searching functionality it tries to also incorporate the board the kanban mode tabular view now i just discovered that it's been trying to implement the bi-directional link functionality that rome research and obsidian are famous for and i just think that this kind of mentality where the team is not laser focused on one functionality and making it as perfect as possible and and instead they try to spread themselves too thin try to do too many things all at the same time it's just setting themselves up for failure and i also think that the notion team spend too much effort and time on user interface instead of the user experience and we'll get into that in just a minute i certainly get the reason why notion appeal and attract a lot of user base for one their pricing strategy is very enticing it's free for personal use and most of the people who are just using Notion as a note-taking software, I believe they're just using this software for individual use. I don't think Notion has been quite popular in the cooperations or large-scale teams. And if we're just talking about a casual individual who's looking to take notes with Notion, then I can certainly see the appeal. For example, you get all these templates that have a lot of very interesting ideas, I would say. For example, journal, or you can use some templates to organize your reading list in a tabular view. However, if you really think about it, Notion is trying to do a lot of the things that there are already very well established softwares that are currently doing that have already occupied the market. For example, one of the functionalities you can achieve using Notion is to create a board or a combine. And from the get go, I can see that it gets a lot of the functionalities down, meaning it seems like you can achieve some sort of workflow that you would in another Kanban software such as Trello or Zenkit. But the question that comes to mind is, if you already have a Kanban software that is well established and has all kinds of software integration, such as Google Drive and Google Calendar integration, that you know that can guarantee you to have a better workflow than using this the Kanban that is supported by Notion, then why would you use the Kanban within this note-taking software? And another example would be inside of Notion, you can also bring up a calendar. You can also bring up an inline calendar. And I can tell you right now that there's no Google Calendar integration. There's no, you cannot synchronize this calendar within Notion to your personal calendar uh, supported by Google or Outlook. So the, again, the question that comes to mind is if it requires you to leave your existing ecosystem to be somewhat committed to this calendar that is provided by this software that is supposed to be a note-taking software, then why are you even doing this? It's just disrupting your pre-established workflow or ecosystem. And I find that to be a very hard sell. And when you open up the templates, you can see that it's very colorful. You can see that every single entry has some sort of emoji right in front of it. I guess it appeals to millennials or younger generation of people, but it also makes you raise your eyebrow a little bit. For example, why some of the uh, emojis just very, it seems very forced. It, it looks like they slapped and a random emoji there just to have some sort of imagery there to avoid boarding the audience or something. And I don't think this kind of design mentality should be applauded. 
For example, why are you using this scale of justice to denote great calculator? Why roommate space has this piece? I guess it's trying to say that with this template, you can achieve peace in your household, but it just seems very forced. And I just don't appreciate this bombardment of visual chaos. And that's the point that I want to raise that the Notion team, they spend too much time and effort into user interface instead of focusing on the user experience. So you can already see that they spend too much time deciding which icon to use. And you can even see there in their templates, in their design templates. Supposedly, they're paying a lot of attention to color icons and topography. If you go to any list view, this type of kerning, the spaces between each line, each block, I just don't find it to be aesthetic. Not only is that not aesthetic, I find it to be very distracting. In contrast, if you go to OneNote, if you look at their list view, you can see that their indentation space and the space between each individual line is all very well thought out. So the overall effect is that from one glance, you can visually discern each block from another. Every heading and all its nested lists is all very clear where the hierarchy is. Whereas in Notion, their strategy is to make each individual line into a draggable block and to make each individual list also draggable and reorganizable. And because of this, I guess they didn't do enough study to see what kind of indentation space can make the user visually tell all the blocks apart better. And for a note-taking software that really tells all the efforts and time they spend on talking about icons, colors, and typography, I find this kind of lack of attention paid to the indentation on the lists very concerning and a little bit disappointing. At least if you don't want to be opinionated and come up with your own implementation of how far all the lists should be indented, at least give the user the ability to customize the look of it. But unfortunately, I don't see such an option in their settings. So it goes back to my point that they spend too much time on talking about the design instead of committing to render the user a better optimized experience. And it goes back to that, even though the Notion supports the markdown syntax very well, one major gripe that I have with the software is that if you look at how they implemented the code fence in 2020, I just think that the lack of auto-completion for parentheses and brackets and quotation marks in the software that supports markdown syntax, syntax highlighted code fences, I just find it to be very unacceptable. And if you look at how they implemented the outline view, although I commend them for implementing this table of content, but in terms of, again, go back to user interface, Let's say that this is a huge document instead of just reading list for a relatively short book. Let's say that this is a huge document that has tons and tons of headings. To implement the table of content at the top of the document without the ability to open this up in a separate pane or a separate view, making this thing uncollapsible, I just have some very serious doubt about how well this is going to function in terms of the user experience. Let's say that for the sake of argument, this is a huge document and we just jump to the 1000th headline. The way Notion implemented their table of content is that they expect you to go back to the top of the document and scroll down to another heading that you would like to navigate to and then do the same thing over again. Whereas in Obsidian, you can totally open up the, the outline in a separate pane and all these things are collapsible. I find it to be a way better experience. Even in Typora that we have talked in length about in many different videos, if you look at how they implemented their uh, outline view, again, they have a different view for that. This is so much better. This is so much easier to navigate. All those sporadic points culminates to one conclusion, which is if you're a developer who are looking to take technical nodes that are mainly in markdown syntax, I don't recommend you to use Notion because it has too much fluffs. It has too much functionalities that you don't necessarily, you shouldn't necessarily concern yourself with. 
Let's just go back to Notion for one minute. Again, I commend them for supporting a lot of the in-demand functionalities such as embedding images, embedding PDF files. But if you click on the image and go to the original, it shows you the full URL of the file that is on their Amazon service right in the address bar. And I just don't think that it's elegant. I don't, I don't think this is the best practice of what you should be doing to a user in terms of presenting the files that they embedded into the Notion software. And I just recently noticed that Notion is currently supporting the bi-directional link functionality that Obsidian and Rome Research is famous for. But I find it interesting that the founder of the Rome Research application is making fun of how Notion implemented their bi-directional link. He's saying that, I admit, when I heard rumor that backlinks were coming, I was pretty nervous. Totally understandable because that's the biggest feature that Rome Research is known for until I saw the implementation. If you look at the embedded GIF, yes, they're using the double square brackets to let the user embed a piece of content, but they don't offer any graph views. There's no bubbles, all the graph bubbles showing you visually how all of your keywords and concepts are linked. Notion's implementation of the bi-directional link is just rather note links that is supported by Evernote and OneNote. No more than that. So with that said, let's jump into another software, which is Joplin. And the TLDR version that I have to say about Joplin is that if you don't care for the bi-directional link functionality that Obsidian offers, Joplin can be a perfect fit for you because it allows you to use Tapara as its external editor. And on top of that, you can synchronize all of your nodes with either OneDrive or some other cloud file storage system. And the underlying presumption is that when it comes to using Markdown syntax to take notes, Tapara is still absolutely king in the market. It's so elegant, so minimalistic, and so customizable. Let's just not try to reinvent the wheel. And instead, let's use some external service that can help us synchronize all the nodes. And on top of that, to be able to search within nested folders of documents. And Joplin supports just that. As you can see, if you go to the settings, the preferences pane of Joplin, you can choose to use Tapara as your external editor. It's also customizable in terms of its themes or appearance, and it also has a lot of plugins, which similar to Obsidian, it's more geared towards geeks and uh, power users who love to tinker with their toolings, who love to configure their text editors, but in my opinion, does not offer nearly as many functionalities as Obsidian does. So if we go back and try to start a new note, uh, we can see that by pressing Command E on Mac, you can bring out Tapara as your external editor. And inside of the Tapara interface, you can type as you normally would. Um, Again, I just love Tapara's implementation of the syntax highlighting and everything so much. And after you saved it, you can safely close it. And within the interface of Joplin, you can see that it's already been synchronized so that you get the best of both worlds. You get to use your favorite Markdown editor, Tapara, as your external editor, and you can use Joplin to search among all your files and synchronize all of your notes across different platforms. Joplin is available on Mac, Windows, Linux, and it even offers you a command line interface so that you can take your notes in your command line. But if you do that, then obviously you couldn't use Tapara. But again, just to reiterate for people who are just looking to take text nodes with markdown syntax with syntax highlighted code fences 
and more importantly who really love using Tapara like I do, then Joplin can totally be a perfect fit for you. However, if you really want to take advantage of the bi-directional links to so really have a graph visually showing you all the keywords or the terms that you've been accumulating in all of your notes, which is currently all the rage in the note-taking community, then again, like we have repeatedly discussed in the previous video, then I think Obsidian is the software that you should be using. But that's all I have to say in today's video. I hope you found it to be informative, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.